The Effenrad Snowboard Podcast is presented by Vans. Season 6 of Effenrad is sponsored by Wired Snowboards, The Boardroom Snowboard Shop, Anon Optics, Crow's Nest Barber Shops, and Ocean Rose Organic Microdoses, Tribute Board Shop in Nelson, B.C., and Stance Socks. Stance Socks have changed the way we think about comfort for our feet, producing the best socks for everyday wear and performance. The Stance Performance Snow Sock is my go-to for all-day comfort, arch support, and impact protection. They feature Stance Feel 360 technology to fight odors and keep your feet cool and dry, and Stance Infinite technology in the areas that experience the most wear, like heel, toe, and forefoot. Plus, Stance has got you covered for everyday socks, underwear, and apparel. Just go to stance.com or stance.ca for Canadian listeners and buy some today. Support also comes from Mount Seymour, Tomahawk Cannabis Extracts, and Grouse Mountain, who has almost two weeks left in their winter season. Go buy a spring pass and ride Grouse's award-winning park in the sun. This week's guest is Robin Van Jin, the legendary backcountry freestyler whose career highlights include winning a Trans World Video Part of the Year Award and this year's Natural Selection Tour. Robin crushed it in Travis Rice's depth perception and has been a sponsored snowboarder for like 20 years. I reached Robin up in Pemberton, where she's currently in quarantine after her epic trip to Alaska. Basically, Austin and I have our home base in Glacier, Washington normally, and we just kind of travel back and forth, but yeah this year there's not really like the option to just travel back and forth as the weather you know changes or as like you know you need to go do stuff in the states or whatever so it's been a little bit um (laughs) it's been a little crazy yeah the benefit of it is it's it forced you to be down in baker during like there were some really good storms right yeah actually baker had an epic year Mm -hmm. they just had a pow day in april which is pretty (laughs) unprecedented for baker yeah yeah to have like a you know foot and a half of fresh in you know beginning of april was pretty wild it was really nice so sick well i want to congratulate you on the two big wins because you won valhalla and then you won trujillo right Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's been a it's been a roller coaster of a season. Definitely when you ch- chose to go over that cliff, there was a moment where my stomach dropped just cuz I knew that there it was a peppery landing and it was humongous, right? Like there were rocks to hit and shit where it was like, "Oh my god. Oh my god." And then when you <laughs> laced it, it was like, "Holy fuck." Like that was one of the most amazing moments of snowboarding this year. It was just sick. Oh. Yeah, that was Thanks. so fun. So fun Thanks. to watch. I don't really remember much about that cliff. And oh, like, I don't know why. I think you just get in like some sort of like weird flow state where you don't remember what you did. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> watching mm-hmm. it on the TV, I was like, oh, it turned out better than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the angles were funny. both really good. Hey, like the angle yeah. up and over was great. But then yeah. when they played the long shot of it i was like oh that it was just yeah that's going to be a highlight reel that they're going to be playing forever and ever that's great yeah it was um it was crazy yeah and honestly that that cliff to me like it did have some pepper but it did line up really well if you took the time to kind of like see it from a couple different angles Mm -hmm. you would have had to have gone like basically crept off of it to hit the rocks it was like it was slightly slanted but yeah, there was a really nice little landing. Um, <laughs> I I spied it. I was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and anyway. you nailed that. That was so great. Thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah, and I'm not really a huge watcher of snowboarding things. Like, I don't watch the Olympics, and I don't watch the Dew Tour or any of that kind of stuff. But Natural Selection pulled me in because it's like every snowboarder's dream to ride freestyle elements in bluebird pow obviously yeah totally the challenge in it is that you're trying to film a video part in a single run or in a single day so yeah yeah exactly i think that's the hard part about it for those of us who have you know been filming for a while is yeah we're used to seeing ourselves in the in the video clips like 
kind of nailing it because you do a bunch of tries <laughs> and then you get it right so it is like hard, almost sometimes hard to watch you're like oh god like i should have done this i should have grabbed here like oh big flail but like you know we're just not used to seeing it and right. <laughs> i don't know yeah so it's kind of it's kind of funky like sometimes when i was watching my runs and you know i was kind of cringing like oh oh you know but it's just part of it. It's part of competing. It's, you know, a kind of a new thing for backcountry snowboarding. And it is really good in, in a sense because it, it kind of brings us back down to earth a little bit like, Oh, it's not perfect every time. And yeah. I think like in snowboard videos, it looks like it's perfect every time. So, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of nice even for the viewer to be like, Oh, so it's not just like, a perfect front three or a perfect back seven every time stomped rode away. Like there's bobbles and there's bales and there's, you know, rolling down the windows and there's doing a run without any tricks at all. Like, yeah, you know, that's just kind of part of it. And it has been hard to watch for me. Like at least watching myself, I'm like, Oh my God, like covering my eyes being like, Oh, I could have done <laughs> better style. Could have grabbed here. Like, Oh, big flail, like huge bail. You know, it's, <laughs> Well, it's your profession. That's the thing. It's your profession. It's your job. So you're looking at it as a professional going like, oh my God, this is, this is not my best work, let's say, right? Like, because yeah. you, you're like, I love what you're saying. Obviously your filmers aren't going to bring you the, a bunch of takes where you roll down the windows or where your style was off no. a little bit. Like everything you see all the time is curated the best moment of like a week long trip is like yeah. four clips. That's all you see. Yeah. But when they're totally. trying to make like a television show out of, you know, you rode, I don't, I, I can't even imagine. You probably only had what, six laps up in, it's eight? Mm. Up, up like in Alaska? Total? total, yeah. Oh yeah, we, I mean, we had more than that because we, we, do, we do warm up runs. Okay. You know, we don't just like jump on slope and go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although, on the final day you, you you could tell like yeah you know everybody was a little stiff in that first <laughs> run it was <laughs> it yeah. took a while to warm up rasmund's know? first it, run was sick like just that morning was. light and just you know like flowing down through and and you kind of got the feeling like okay well nobody knows what the snow's going to be like and then he gets to the bottom and he's just you know radio his first thought is like i got to radio up to those guys it's great it's good like yeah uh, it, it uh, really did feel like snowboarding with you guys. That's how it felt. It felt like we were yeah. out there snowboarding with you guys. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I thought that Rasmus actually his opening line when he opened the entire uh, final. Yeah, that was a film line. Totally. You know, like that, that's the one you would keep and be like, oh yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, this one I nailed. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. It was just, just so flowing. beautiful. It was, it was pink, mm -hmm. you know, the light was pink still from like, it was very early. It was, I think like eight thirty or something in the morning. And we had been up at the top, just sitting there for half an hour, like walking around, trying to like, you know, warm up and get ready. <laughs> it was yeah. pretty loud. And then just to drop in like cold, you're like, okay, like here we go. So, well, you guys were all professionals and and made it look amazing. So that's fun. Thanks. Are you? I'm are glad you, you enjoyed it? Are you guys? I'm I'm talking to you now. Are you hyper critical of your own snowboarding, anyways? Like when you're oh, yeah. looking at your parts and depth perception, or 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 the full moon stuff like are you yeah so you're looking at it very critically going okay next year oh totally <laughs> like i mean yeah i think it's hard to like you compare yourself to everybody mm, else mm -hmm. and you're always comparing yourself to everybody else's strong suits or like what they're good at mm -hmm. you know and like how do i kind of take little bits of everybody else's good you know well, why don't i have good style doing this trick or <laughs> you know it's just it's just the way it is, you know, like, and I think any, anybody in like any sport can resonate with that. Nothing's ever perfect. You're never like, Oh, that was perfect. Like <laughs> yeah. it happens randomly, but you're always surprised. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know we're talking with Sean Kearns about uh, when he used to film back in the day, most of the big 
awesome shots that they got weren't like the ones that they storyboarded or planned out or you know like it's like they they build some feature for a week they wait for the light to be perfect somebody goes and blows it three times on that and then on the way back they go well why don't we hit this little thing that looks neat and then they just do a little pat down and someone gets like a trick and they're like jesus yeah. holy shit yeah that's true yeah it's very true i feel like you can film the whole season and the thing that you thought was like your banger shot when you look at it you're like oh and then the thing that you thought was like this dumb little hit that you just did for fun, it looks insane. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I think sometimes though, like you can tell, you know, when you are super on it, you like nail the grab, you nail the style. And it, there's a feeling, you know, there's a feeling where you're just like, oh yeah, that's it. And you always know, you're like, oh, I think that was really good, <laughs> you know? Or And you always know the opposite too. You're like, oh, that was super bad. Like, <laughs> I know my style is bad. I don't need to see the video footage to know that. Right. I need to go back up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd turn right around yeah. and go back right up. Yeah, there's always a really good or bad feeling involved in your, and we know, you know, you're like, oh yeah, no, that was like super bad. Gotta go back up. Or like, Oh yeah, that felt really, really good. Um, Cause you just have that, you know, there's a moment in there where you like do a poke or, you know, I don't know when you all your body language just comes together and it's like your, your mind knows they're like, Oh yeah, yeah. This, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've never obviously been a professional, but I've had, had a couple of moments of that, that luckily were before, uh, cell phones so i just have them in my head like oh yeah that i stomped out that method in in bend oregon one time you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i think if i would have had <laughs> yeah. video of it i would be very disappointed but in my head it's like this amazing trick that i did one day it's like great yeah and that is the difference yeah that's the difference between <laughs> yeah that that's what makes you a professional is that you can do that and have somebody film you doing it and it actually be legitimately amazing and you usually have to try it a few times so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true yeah. um mm -hmm. where did you start out i don't really know i'm actually from vancouver island where we Sick. don't really have a lot of skiing and snowboarding there's two mountains yeah there used to be three yeah. ribbon plateau mount Kane, and mount washington but i actually grew up skiing um in like you know two weeks a year or something like that at silver star in uh in vernon British Columbia. yeah yeah and so for the early part of my life i skied um, yeah. and not that much you know i wasn't an exceptional skier by any means i was really not that great but you know i just went like you know with the family yeah for two weeks every year that was like our big winter vacation and uh i actually didn't start snowboarding until i was 16 i was a snowboard fan <laughs> when i went out 14 when when snowboarding kind of was starting to gain traction and it was such like a it was a growing cool thing you know and I was yeah. so impressionable at 14 and um I I moved to Whistler the day after I graduated but I I started I started snowboarding at Mount Washington on Vancouver Island um kind of like randomly you know I'd go like three or four times a year and you never really get very good if you do that right and I just knew right away that I wanted to go do that. And I moved to Whistler three days after I graduated my like grad ceremony. I was like, okay, I'm right here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And I, I just moved up there and dedicated, you know, my just got like three jobs and worked as much as I could to survive. You know, I was like pretty young, never really moved away from home and was living in Whistler with like four girls in one room. <laughs> and I just kind of dedicated my time to learning how to snowboard. So you were almost a beginner when you moved there. Yeah. <laughs> that's, sure. that's incredible. Like, yeah, you, was, yeah, usually somebody catches the bug. They do a few years, you know, in Ontario or wherever. And, yeah. and then take a trip out to Lake Louise, kind of get halfway there, you know, and then go back and tell their friends, look, let's go to mo let's move to Whistler. But you were like, OK, I'm, I'm I'm moving to Whistler. That's what I've decided to do. Yeah, it was the closest 
I mean, like Whistler was so much in the media at that point, you mm. know, the, mm-hmm. the treetop movies yep. and the wildcats and like everything was Whistler backcountry, yep. you know, and the Whistler park. And so, I mean, it was kind of just, you know, when you flip through snowboard Canada, which was like a magazine that I got, yeah. you know, yeah. and obviously I got trans and all the rest, whatever, but like, that was what I was saying. And it seemed so close. Like why <laughs> it yeah. was right there. It was a ferry ride and an hour and a half drive or two hours after that. So yeah. it was the no brainer. I was like, yeah, of course. And I had a friend um, from high school, she was actually my like oldest friend since I was like five years old and she had moved there and her brothers were up there snowboarding and, you know, cool. she came home and was like, Oh my God, it's so cool. Like everybody up there is just like, you know, <laughs> learning how to ride park and you got to come, you know, I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, so I kind of did that and just like fully immersed myself. What, um, what for- board do you move there with? Um, I had a, a 148 Nitro Glide. Oh, nice. Yeah. Not a bad board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And with the matching bindings, oh, you know, a cool. little white board with the white bindings. I was like, ooh, this is sleek. I thought it, <laughs> I thought it was so cool. <laughs> I actually rode a Nitro Glide for, um, like, my second board was a Nitro Glide. I liked it so much, I just went. Uh, and got another one. You repeated. Oh, that's awesome. I repeated. <laughs> and then randomly, like my third board was the JF Pelshat Pro model by Rosignol. That was a good and board. Was, that was a great board. Yeah. It was a orange, orange snowboard with a big moon on it. Nice. And I had it in a 156. Yep. And I was riding park with that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't afford to have a park board and a power board. So I just... I got one board because I really wanted to have a bigger board in the POW. Yep. And it just kind of fell into my lap. The board fell into my lap. And I was like, okay. You know, and, but thinking about it now that I learned to ride the Whistler Park on a 56, like stiff <laughs> board is kind of crazy. But yeah. And it's funny how things come full circle because JF is now my boss at, um, <laughs> now yeah. at now snowboard at yeah. now bindings and he's a really good friend and you know i've had the pleasure of snowboarding with his daughters and it's it's really cool i'm like oh i don't know how this all happened but <laughs> it's like a cool circle yeah that <laughs> that's amazing so you're yeah. riding this rosy in the park which i mean it's too big for you obviously but having a board that's too big for you at at Whistler's actually kind of an advantage cuz people in Whistler ride insanely fast. So like for tricks and stuff it's not the greatest but for learning how to to really just open it up on the mountain hold an edge and keep up with everybody it's probably pretty good. Yeah, I mean I actually feel like getting onto a bigger board earlier Mm-hmm. And doing it in the park made it that much easier when I found the right tool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So later down the road, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to need a shorter board and not something that's like cow specific, you know, if I'm going <laughs> to yeah. ride the park. And then when I went to go ride the park, things became a lot easier on that, like smaller, more like nimble <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> snowboard. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Are you I don't sponsored? Think it, I think it was an advantage. Are you sponsored by that time or is this still, are there, a, oh, no. there's quite a few seasons of just like getting the basics down and starting to get better at, at park and, and just riding in general. Oh yeah. No sponsors didn't come till way later. Hmm. Um, I rode in Whistler for two seasons and then I actually decided, I, I don't know, the, the Whistler scene was really cool, but I also found myself kind of the friends that I was making and hanging out with. There was a lot of like heavy partying and yeah, um, I didn't, I didn't want to go that route necessarily. Like, of course I partied like, yeah, yeah. but I just wasn't into like drugs or anything like that, you know? And I, and I, as I kind of saw myself be like that outsider at a party who wasn't doing cocaine or, you know, sure. I was like, ah. I was like, maybe I need a change of scenery. And my parents are both, um, they were both academics, uh, well, professionals. And so they were super pissed that I didn't 
pick up and go straight to university. I, I deferred for two years and, you know, I ended up like kind of having this feeling where I was like, oh, I don't know, the like party scene's kind of crazy. I don't see myself really getting ahead in my life here right now at that time, just in that small little span of time. And, yeah. you know, they were really pushing like, hey, Robin, this is really important. Like you need to go get an education. You'll, you know, and they were very adamant about that. And, um, <clears throat> I think the convincing worked and I'm <laughs> really glad it did. And I ended up moving to Calgary, um, to, to start my post-secondary studies. And it was great because I got there and realized I could still snowboard every day Rad. because there was Canada Olympic park Yep. and I somehow fell into, um, the snowboard scene there really quickly. Like I had met James beach, um, on the glacier with a friend and I just cold called him and it just happened <laughs> to be that same day was like, you know, a university, uh, snowboard club party or meeting or whatever it was. And I ended up meeting everybody who was like deeply involved in that scene on the first night and kind of just hit it off. And Rad. they became, you know, kind of my, fa my snowboard family for the next five years. And yeah, I, oh, I snowboarded incredible. so much. Yeah, and I actually learned a lot while I was in Calgary. I kind of learned how to ride the park properly. Right, right. <laughs> while I was there, yeah. That's amazing because, so. yeah, I remember the UBC Snowboard Club. Be because I worked at a shop, we would, we would offer a discount to the UBC Snowboard Club. And, you know, year after year, you'd watch these kids come in and, I I I was always the like kind of hypercritical, you know, shop guy that's like I've dedicated my life to snowboarding, you know, like these kids are going to going to school, what a waste of time. It just bites into your snowboarding or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um and uh but it looked like they were having a lot of fun. That was probably more I was probably more jealous than anything cuz I always wanted to go to pro post secondary as well. Um but it sounds like you landed somewhere at the right place, the right time where there was like a cool scene. You're able to get your academic stuff done. You're riding all the time with a good group of people. And so mm -hmm. it was a constant, constant improvement through, through those five years. Do you start to compete while you're, while you're in Calgary or, or is it yeah. still just kind of fun? No, no, no. That's kind of where, um, things took off for me. I, you know, I ended up the first year I was there just like, meeting everybody, getting in the scene. And I think the difference is, you know, when you're talking about like, okay, well, were you sponsored in Whistler? Were you sponsored in Calgary? Like, mm -hmm. so Whistler scene had so many incredible snowboarders oh, that course. like to stand out there, it was just not, uh, it was so much harder. Yeah. So, of course. you know, when I got to Calgary and I was riding the park and found my crew, I was kind of one in in a crew yeah that was very connected and they all had most of them had sponsors already and um so it wasn't you know it was kind of a no-brainer and i i started working at a snowboard shop and then Rad. you know rock roxy started sending me outerwear and that was kind of my first ever like you know the flow program and i got some boards and you were with roxy the, forever like right up until yeah. this season right to the beginning That's, of this season yeah. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. But I actually took a hiatus. Like they flowed me gear yeah. for um, like a year, maybe two years. And I actually ended up um, getting sponsored by Section, which was part of Tech Nine. Oh, yeah. Um, and so I, I actually left Roxy because I, I was just getting gear and, you know, it was great and everything. But I didn't. I was like, oh, I kind of want more. Like I kind of would like a, a little bit of travel budget or whatever. Yeah. And I met the guys trent bush and his brother they kind of hooked me up and started riding for them Dope. and yeah and so i was riding for tech nine and section for you know li a little over a year yeah and then and i was working on trying to get on the actual team not just being like a rep rider you know right and then the company kind of dissolved so uh -huh. <laughs> so, so kind of all things at once i was like oh shit okay but then I ended up riding for Air Blaster. Oh, um, fun. Yeah, for almost a year, same thing. It was like very quick turnover in that time. And then 
um, I was recruited back to Roxy um, during my time at Air Blaster. And I didn't have like a, you know, I had a contract, but it wasn't really like a contract. I don't know. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't like legally binding. It was like the way that Air Blaster <laughs> does things is like so great. It's just like a, a handshake, you know, and they still do that. They're so amazing like that. Um, they look like I so much fun. Time. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I loved riding for Air Blaster. I thought Jesse was just the coolest. <laughs> Grankowski, who was yeah. so awesome. And the team that they had was so great. And anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I ended up getting recruited back to Roxy. And um, yeah, the rest is history. I rode for them for Roxy for 13 years. Yeah. 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 And did most of your career Roxy. Yeah. Was it Roxy Snowboards too through Mervin? Yep. Awesome. Yep. Through Mervin. Yep. Roxy yeah. Snowboards. I actually rode Roxy Bindings. There was Boots for half a second. And then, Jesus. <laughs> you know, they're kind of a brand that just makes everything. And Yeah. Yeah. Where are you competing and in what? Like, what are you slope style? Um, yeah, I was competing in big air, yep. rail jams, yep. and slope style. And mostly just in Alberta and, and BC. So I would go back to Whistler and like, you know, after having a little bit of competitive experience around the time when I was like 21 yeah. and I was like having really good success that year, you know, and this is all like regional comps, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing major. Um, <laughs> and then I would go back to BC and try my hand there. And, you know, it, it was very much a realization that I was in a really good place in Alberta where I had, you know, I wasn't the best by any means, you know, there was, um, couple of girls who were really good and I was basically trying to catch up to them but in doing so like you know learned a lot in the park I was never really that great at competing specifically and I wasn't I was never really that consistent in the park I was better at big airs because you could try one trick yeah x amount of times and it was just like best trick so that format was great because I, I felt like I could always land on the podium at big air because I would, you know, try, you know, like a back five or whatever at, or a switch back one on a big jump. And yeah. I'd have a bunch of tries to get it and then you would get it and you're like, OK, sick. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas like slope style, it's more about your run. Yeah. Um, and I, I struggled more with that. Um, but I did try to go. Uh, compete like on a like in the states i went to the u.s open one time <laughs> in vermont in vermont yeah i just kind of like wanted to try it out and thought, how was okay, that experience i want to go see yeah yeah it, i mean it was fun I, got, I met lots of amazing snowboarders and i was really excited to be part of just the event you yeah. know like, uh, like whoa huge. all my heroes are here everybody who's in magazines is here like whoa i can't believe it you yeah. know but again like i had tricks i just wasn't consistent and i didn't know how to compete so i would you know i went and did my runs and qualifying i was trying tricks that i really didn't know how to land consistently <laughs> instead of doing yeah. Yeah. a 360 and a 540 and I would try like, okay, I'll do a front three. And then I would just go try a back seven, which I wasn't landing consistently at all. Right. You know? And it's like, well, why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> like in hindsight, you know, you look back and you're like, I was like doing that, but it's just the adrenaline just yeah. got the best. Yeah. And I was like, all right, woo. I landed one thing. Here we go. Like big finish. <laughs> um, so, but you know, watching kind of like how, Jamie Anderson approached her career. She was just like in her earlier, <clears throat> earlier time in snowboarding. She was like, she didn't do craziest tricks. She just was consistent at the ones that she knew. And she would always land on top. Yeah. Um, and, you know, kind of like looking back, I was like, oh, okay, that's what I was doing wrong. I was trying stuff. I didn't know how to consistently land. Well, there's, there's something about competition too. That is like, you know, that especially now that you're known to be a backcountry free ride snowboarder, there's it's like a jail of like training and getting your trick on lock. And and, you know, like people saying, oh, well, you're just doing the same run over and over and over again until you've got it completely locked down, 
which is true. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's the person that's that wins. It's it's very rare that it's someone at the top of a contest where I'm thinking, I don't know, I'm going to wing it. Whatever happens, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go and blast and have fun and hopefully that works out <laughs> yeah it's it's totally. it's not as much fun to watch when you're you know you're down at mount hood and you're you're watching somebody just work on a trick forever and ever and ever it's like kind of frustrating on their behalf you're like oh geez that yeah. lo that doesn't look like fun like snowboarding in the backcountry <laughs> fun definitely not at all but yeah. but then also when you're in the backcountry and you see somebody taking three or four attempts at something really huge you're like oh that also does not look like fun that looks yeah, there's scary a, there's been a lot of body destruction you know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Totally. It's, i think part of being a snowboarder and maybe it, it, this isn't the experience for everybody but there is some trade-off you know it's like you sacrifice your body especially mm -hmm. people like me who didn't start with a solid foundation. We just started, I just started sending it right away, <laughs> you know? And it's like, I was taking all, like I was taking really harsh bails. Like people would cringe, you know? And I, mm. I would just get up and be fine. You know, I'd just be like, yep, I'm okay. And it's funny because uh, I, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's the way I'm built or, you know, my experience as a child having like, amazing cousins and we would just like you know send it off of everything kind of like the mayhem or jackass videos we did that as kids you know <laughs> yeah so you like you learn to like crash hard and get up and be like yep i'm fine <laughs> <laughs> um and so i i felt like uh yeah that was kind of one of my superpowers as like a, a young budding snowboarder is the ability to like crash really hard and get yeah. up and be okay but there were a lot of injuries for sure for yeah. a span of time i think i drove my parents crazy because they were like <laughs> okay you are injured literally every two months you've had you know two double black eyes you've broken your arm twice and you know it was yeah. just ongoing i'd be like oh yeah i just injured this and i could hear them like big sigh like <sighs> <sighs> you know <laughs> of course. and they're going like are you done yet and i was like oh guys you have no idea i'm like here for the long haul <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know there's a lineage you know like tara dikita's when i was talking mm -hmm. with her she that was you know it took her a long time of crashing like the crashing gets people's attention or just um, you're bringing to mind just kamira like if yeah. you if you have seen her new movie which you probably yep. have learned to drown. I have. Like, mm -hmm. it gives you this background to what she went through to make those video parts that makes you kind of go, I, I, honest to God, there was a point where I was like, I don't even know if that was worth it. But then when you see the footage, you're like, oh my God, yeah, it's like, holy shit, like that, that just, that great, those great shots took like great bails to get. Yeah. And, big risk, big reward for sure. Yeah, danger, big reward. And yeah. Natasha talked about it this year on on her episode that when she was young, she would do anything for snowboarding because snowboarding's just this addictive, fun, like lifestyle choice. You're like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I'll hit that jump, sure. The guys yep. are hitting it, I'll hit it, sure. Yep. Uh, but then totally. as she got deeper into her career, she was like, you know, I'm not willing to die for this anymore yeah. <laughs> like which surprised me that she was like i was willing to die and i was like i don't think i've ever been at that point but i kind of get it i get it like you're trying something that's like outside of your pay scale you're like you know what i don't have a hope in hell of landing this but it's big and everybody's watching and i already told everyone i could do it so i guess i better try <laughs> i think more than that though it's like when you try big stuff like that and i'm i mean again i can't speak for every snowboarder right but you know like the intention is that you do land yes and that you do right away yes and you're you're never going to do something that you know for sure you're not going to land oh absolutely especially with the big like it's just like part of being human. You're not that stupid. You know, <laughs> yeah, there's some yeah, sort of like yeah, yeah. weird confidence that you're like, okay, yep, I can totally do this, which, you know, there's a lot of 
question marks, but there's like a deep, deep knowing that you're like, oh yeah, I could land this. Yes. So I should try, you know, and maybe you don't land it for a while, but then you keep going and then you do land it. And that's when you really get like those like big aha moments. And I fully resonate with, um, Jess Camara and the style that she had. Cause I did that in the back country. I, I had a full year. My nickname was Robba Hawk because I would <laughs> go big and I would just Tomahawk yep. for an entire year. And like, that's the thing that they don't tell you about backcountry snowboarding is if you're going from the park to the backcountry, there is a bit of a learning curve. If you haven't ridden Powell very much or like jumped into Powell very much, yeah. the learning curve, it literally extends for a year or two where you're just like learning where you need to land on your board, how you need to land on your feet, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, gauging the depth of the snow. And if you can go that, if it's like steep enough for the depth, you know, it's yeah. like this weird, like scientific <laughs> <laughs> um, calculation, you know, that you need to figure out. And I spent so much time um, filming and falling. You know, yeah. I, I got invited to film with Standard after doing a really short, like three day stint with A. Ron Whitley and Leanne Pelosi yeah. in the backcountry in Whistler. And they were like, okay, do you want to film for Standard? And I guess I impressed them enough that, you know, I, they thought that, oh, well, we, if we stick with her, she'll probably land. Right, right. But the reality of it was, is I wasn't ready. And I didn't land the entire season. I oh, would just wow. go huge and not land. And I didn't make the movie. Yeah. That was your year and, that you were doing that. You were filming with standard. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. 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 Well, they did that with UC. When I talked with Dave Hatchett, he was saying like UC came over, you could see in the air, like this kid's mm -hmm. going to crush. But for a full year, he didn't land one thing. Same story. It's cool <laughs> to hear it because, like, how frustrated yeah. were you after a year? Were you at the point where you wanted to quit, or the whole no. time you were just like, "I, I got to learn this." I never wanted to quit. So uh, it's weird how that kind of happens to you. You just kind of know. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I, I also think like there was no real plan B for me. Like I went to university. I decided to become a professional snowboarder. Yeah. Like. You know, I didn't really like, of course, I had a backup plan. The backup plan was, well, I got this university education and I can I can do stuff. And, <laughs> you know, I'll figure I got skills in other ways. <laughs> I'll figure out how to make money and have a good life. But um, I didn't really make a plan B or anything like that. I just thought it was this or nothing. And I knew somehow I don't know how I knew, but it was like deep, deep knowing you're like, if I stick with this long enough. I can do it, right. you know, like, and I, I, I'll be able to like, I'll be able to make something of it. And even when you have a full year of bails and you hear no's, you even now, like you just, there's so many no's, but the yeses that do happen are so good that it's worth it. Brad. You know, and I loved snowboarding so much. I didn't care. Yeah. You know, I was just like, Oh yeah. Like, okay. You don't believe in me. That's fine. I'll go over here and I'll keep trying and you just keep trying and keep trying and keep trying until it works out. And there, I don't know. I don't, I, that's the way that I approached it. I was like, I just know that if I stick with this long enough, it'll work out. So what, yeah, that's, that's incredible to have that kind of fortitude. That's awesome and inspiring. Um, what goes on between the year that you film for standard and bail and 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 bail all year and mm -hmm. the depth perception here like how much time passes between those between those years i would say that was like seven or eight years past yeah um and i actually my footage from standard you know they gave it back all all of it back to roxy because roxy had paid for it which i felt so bad because you know <laughs> i was like oh my god am i gonna get fired <laughs> <laughs> like they just paid for me to film standard and blew it yeah. but um amber stackhouse was my team manager and she really she did she believed in me and she ended up being like well hey why don't you give your footage to peep show 
Yeah. And so I did. I was like, oh, yeah, great idea. And I gave them my footage and it went in the movie. And then the following year, I ended up filming with them again. And it was like a really cool way for me to show up in like a women's only movie. And I felt like really I wasn't ready for big time. I wasn't ready for standard. I wasn't ready for absinthe or any of those, mm-hmm. you know, and it was a really good place to end up. I was like, okay, this isn't the end goal. You know, the end goal was to film for like the bigger productions. And, but like to do peep show, I was so psyched. And I was, you know, riding alongside Desiree and Colleen. And these are all people that I totally respected. Right. Hannah had her footage in there. And that's kind of how Hannah and I started working together because, you know, kind of being represented in that movie. And I don't know, it was great. I, I loved the peep show crew. I thought they did something really special. And I, I feel like even now, like the uninvited and too hard, those all, you know, were inspired by that, that like super organic, raw, like way to make a snowboard film. Just two girls with a video camera, film what you can, not the best footage, not the, not the worst footage, super fun, super whatever. This is what snowboarding is. Here you go. This is a movie. Yeah. Yeah. A little less of the crazy pressure of like, I can imagine a standard shoot in the two thousands to be like pretty, you know, like, Hey, you know, we're trying to get the A, 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 A footage here. So yeah, uh, I'm not even going to film you if you're going to go off something small, right? Like, okay. Yeah. Warm up on that. That's fine. But I'm not wasting even my effort to turn the camera towards you on something that mm-hmm. small we got to find something big because this is standard yeah. and then you go to a, a more is it a more friendly kind of fun kind of yeah like you said organic i think you just feel um you feel differently mm-hmm. you know like when you're you know in front of you can be, it can be really intimidating to at least for me i found it a little bit intimidating to be like okay this person is filming for standard or this person's filming for absinthe and their camera's on and you're like oh my god like <laughs> don't blow it don't blow it yeah you know? yeah of course <laughs> whereas when it's just like you and some girlfriends and you're filming for a movie that has a little bit less like um pressure involved you just you're just going and you're snowboarding and having fun and I think that's one thing I've learned in over time in snowboarding is if I'm not having fun and I'm not confident in what I'm riding I'm never going to ride well Mm. yeah of course yeah yeah you just got to make sure that it's like fun and easy and you're like you feel good (laughs) yeah yeah then the creativity comes out you're a little bit more yeah be building each other up as opposed you're not to, afraid to yeah. fall yeah, yeah you're not yeah. afraid to blow a shot because yeah. you can go back up and nobody's judging you and you're like mm. nobody's like oh okay like we'll give you one more try it's like <laughs> yeah go as many times as you want you know <laughs> right right yeah it was interesting with um coming back to the to the natural selection i loved that they gave you guys the choice like with the women's snowboarding of when to go as opposed to every other um contest that that i've ever paid any attention to it's kind of like the women's stuff is like b-roll so like okay we'll run the men's stuff when the light is good and when the da 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 and then women can go when it's windy or when it's kind of blown out or blah 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 if the when the men don't want to go which is completely lame for women snowboarding it's always yeah. nice to see when and am i right on this one did did natural selection kind of step it up and and put uh some more emphasis on the women's riding oh they did 100 percent. like they definitely gave us the opportunity to shine and gave us you know decision making power as equal as the guys which at this Good. point is a no-brainer yeah yeah you know? yeah yeah the whole thing was like you decide whether you want to go first or last you know that was where zoe and i disagreed i was i wanted to go at the beginning of the contest right um and that that's you know it's a competitive mind versus like a film mind you know like and that's totally fine we disagreed there um basically when i found like the night before the day before the final they were like okay this is going to be the drop order we're going to have all the men go and then the women go and i was like whoa 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 we're going to be riding in the most amount of tracks yeah like i think for us to be the most successful for the women to like really do well 
I think it would be best if, you know, you ran the men's final and then the women's final and then the men's consolation. Yeah. But um, they, the way that it reads on television and something I didn't really think about is they want the final to be last. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that when you make an announcement and like, oh, so-and-so wins the natural selection Tordrillo, then you're not still like watching the consolation after. And I understood that once they explained it, I was like, okay, yeah. I get that. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, well, it's not live. Yeah. <laughs> like, just cut it the other can, way. You can edit it, you know? <laughs> and then it, and I brought it up, you know, I brought it up to the group. I actually called like a writer's meeting. I was like, hey, we should have a writer's meeting. Cause like, I fully don't agree. I feel like I would like to go in the, like in the middle of the two men. And I felt like, you know, if there's a final and a consolation for the men, like, you should let the one and two woman go before the three and four men so that we have a better chance of landing, yep. not hitting tracks, Yes, you know, less tracked out. And for me, like for filming, like I know that if it's the fresher it is, the better. Totally. But also there's strategy involved, which, you know, I'm not that versed on quite yet. I'm learning as I go, <laughs> but it's better to watch people go figure out where the snow is, what things are riding like, what the other person is doing in their run totally. so that you can improve on that. Yeah. Right. So, and I, I get it. Like I, I fully understand. And I, I don't think, you know, when they were like, Oh, well you guys can go first or last. We were like, <laughs> uh, well, we don't really want to go first, <laughs> 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 you know? So it was kind of, it was, a. Uh, I I would say that it, we disagree, but in the end it was fine, but you could tell in the last runs, it was really choppy. Oh and, like, yeah. You know, I went to go do backflip. I like landed on my feet, but then I just hit the tracks, yep. you know? And it's like, you have to wonder if it could have been different if it was fresh, but you always have the opportunity to hit something else. You don't have to hit the, thing, the track, but you just, you just get kind of like sucked into it though. Don't you? Like I've seen it just riding around where there's like a cool feature, but if somebody's kind of gone off a thing and you've already got a track set, you kind of, now you know what the takeoff is like and yeah. you can just sort of trend a little left to get a, catch a fresh landing, but it just, it sucks you in. You, totally. you know that something's been done. So you're like a little bit more confident about being able to boost off it. I mean, you look at the guys, they all took like two runs on features, some three, right? Because yep. like you already know the feature. Okay, now you're going to just like find a fresh landing. And yep. and now you know the speed for it. That's the thing about that contest is like, holy shit. Like Austin's first run in Jackson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God. One of the <laughs> raddest things that's ever happened in snowboarding. So dope. But like yeah. he, he cooked it to I flat know. off that. Uh, like he was just frothing. Hey, like. You could see yeah. that was that it was, was crazy. so crazy awesome. It was, and it's funny because he actually did the exact same thing at the test event the year before. <laughs> of course like, he did. Okay, well, now I know the speed this year. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, okay, cool, and then does the same thing, and you're like, ah, <laughs> you know, like features change over a year for sure. Yeah, um, but I just love the amount of speed and power he rides with it's so impressive oh yeah I, I'm like i feel really lucky to snowboard with him all the time because i'm i'm learning so much dope all the time yeah, yeah. that that last session at baker rainbow yeah rainbow. yeah did you ride that too was it i actually kind of ejected out of the state you know i i just needed to and i'm i'm probably going back to the states which is like <laughs> a little bit rough, but I, I've been working on a movie project for a while and I, I need to finish uh, what I started there. So yep. I'll be headed back to the States. But um, yeah, I, I left and then Brain Bowl happened. I was kind of, I've been in quarantine here. so Yeah, you did yeah. quarantine three times this year. That's six weeks of quarantine. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, it's not that bad, honestly. <laughs> yeah. It can be bad if it's really good pow. Yes. And, you, and you're missing out. You know, of that course. could be really bad. However, my first quarantine, you know, I'm good friends with Jeff Pensiero and his family yep. up at Baldface Lodge. And the lodge was closed this year um, and they weren't operating. 
So there's just empty cabins, but they have to keep them at a certain temperature for them to be, you know, not freeze. And, yeah. you know, they had the maintenance guys up there and stuff. And I kind of lo- like Jeff and I were talking and he kind of lobbed it out like softly, like, oh, yeah, you could. <laughs> you could go quarantine a bald face. And I was like, yeah, ha ha ha. Like, is that a real offer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, we actually ended up doing that. We went and quarantined at bald face for two weeks and oh, Austin wow. came with me. So fun. Yeah. And then the second quarantine was after Jackson hole. And I had been going full speed filming in Canada, landing in Jackson hole, filming there. And then boom, the contest. And then we had this crazy, like, epic pow week at the resort. Right. Yeah. Like, it was so much snowboarding in Jackson Hole. It was incredible. <laughs> but after that, I landed home and I was like, okay, two weeks of catching up, like, working on production, giving my body a rest, gathering energy for the rest of the season. And yeah. it was awesome. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. And even now, like, I just got home big long season you know was just in the towards and then after that i was in valdez with uh jamie and austin and ejac and it you know i was like okay like (laughs) a lot of adrenaline (laughs) and uh here i am back and really enjoying it and there's no missing out it's like beautiful sunny laying out on the grass in the backyard you know just kind of like gathering myself (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would be a little different if it was, if it was rainy and gray and snowing up on the mountains. Like it's kind of a nice time to be able to just, you know, a forced chill out. Yeah. And I think like, as I'm like, you know, as, as I age, I'm <laughs> aging, you know, as a snowboarder, it is important for me to be able to slow down because I haven't really adjusted. You know, like I still go, pretty pretty hard us uh, all like you know same kind of speed like i'm always going pretty quick and fast and like doing back to back days and you know go 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 and then now i'm learning to kind of kind of go okay well you do need to stop recalibrate so that you can do that again yeah. you know i can't just say keep doing it for <laughs> you know 4 or 5 months straight how i used to um, and sleep for a month right? in, in right. May or, or June, you know, now I'm like, okay, well, I actually need to like take those little breaks through the season and, uh, make sure that I'm, you know, snowboarding for fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like going to the mountain or going sledding and just going and doing laps. Like yeah. I need to incorporate that. I can't just be like filming and shooting and competing all the time. Like I need, I need little <laughs> breaks. So, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been great. And I actually, my friend Ming was like, Oh, I think you should just do forced quarantine every year <laughs> during the season. I'm like, you know, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Like force yourself to take two weeks off right in the middle of the season. And then you just would be out there way more hungry too. And yeah. in better shape. Yeah, it yeah. makes a lot of sense. I have taken breaks in the past. Like, you know, uh, I went surfing one year. I, I, my, my dad turned 70 and my family went to Hawaii. And I couldn't pass up the opportunity to be with my family on such an you know, 70th yeah. birthday. And yeah, I was going to go. <laughs> and I went and I went surfing for a week and had some really nice family time. And that's what's really important to me is just making sure that I spend time with friends and family because that's really like an important part of my life, you know? Um, cool. So, uh, yeah, I, I took, a, I think a week and a half off and then I immediately got on a trip to Japan and <laughs> honestly I landed in Japan and the first day I was just like, you know, landing tricks and snowboarding really well. And I was like, what the hell happened? <laughs> Maybe I should go surfing every year. <laughs> that's so dope. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Tell me a bit about the experience at Galena at Al Clark's place. Like, they really made that cabin look amazing. I've stayed in that, in the cabina. The, it, yeah. It, what, a, what a fun zone. What an amazing person. Al Clark's just <laughs> m- one of my favorites. And, yeah. Uh, and filming for that project must have just been, 
like I think he said that you guys were landing helicopters in the yard or something like it was just like a big production in a in a sleepy small little place. Yeah, we were landing helicopters up in Ferguson okay. where there's yeah. uh, a clean helicopter landing, but it, it's yeah. pretty much the yard, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but staying in the cabin was great. We had um Austin and I had the thing to ourselves and um that was really nice and brian and travis were staying with uh our friend cholo and and his wife jenna and um then the production crew was next to us in a couple condos but yeah very sleepy setup you know it was really quiet yeah there's nothing really to do there at night so it was a really (laughs) good like incubator yeah yeah (laughs) you know and we were there so Galena was filmed in two parts or okay. death perception. So yep. we were there for, uh, I want to say three weeks the first time. And we were in, um, in the town proper. And then, um, the second time we went back, we actually stayed at CMH Galena at the lodge when it was closed. Rad. Um, but yeah, it was great being in like this little sleepy situation and, um, going up and, <laughs> you know, doing that much heli time was pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. And not having the pressure of, you know, like an absent, you know, part film where you're trying to get these tricks. It was more like, okay, your your job here is to snowboard and have fun. Right. Like yeah. we're going to do these pillow lines that are insane. We're going to ride powder. I don't know powder. if That's... I would like fully agree with that. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know? Yeah. 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 yeah you... Imagine, uh, imagine Travis Rice, who's, <laughs> you know, done, uh, that's it. That's all. And yes. In the fourth phase. I'm like, Oh, yes. this is his next thing. He's never invited a female and asks you to go. I literally couldn't even respond. I was so nervous. Like when I, he, he came up to me at bald face and was like, Hey, yeah, I'm um, just wondering if um, maybe you want to do this film thing a couple of weeks. Like, it'd be really great. And I was like, I, I basically, like, slid onto the floor off of the seat that I was on because I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I was like, is this for real? Like, what? you know, but with that came a lot of um, pressure that I put on myself to perform at the highest level I've ever performed at and people are going to be watching and judging and you're, you're going to be in a, you know, Travis Rice film, like don't blow it, you know? So I don't, I feel like that was the most pressure I've ever felt. Okay. That um, makes sense. Out of anything I've ever filmed. And it actually really didn't work for me. You know, like when I first started filming for depth, I was trying this is and this kind of goes back to like my competitive days. I was trying to go really big and kind of rise to the occasion and rise to the level that like all of the guys were at and I wasn't landing and I started spiraling kind of, you know, downward because I just uh, I was so angry at myself and. You know, I, I was getting a few shots here and there, um, but I was really bummed. Wow. And it, yeah. And poor Austin, like, was with me the whole time. I was a total wreck, just like, what am I doing? I'm blowing it. Like, this is such an amazing opportunity. And I'm just, like, I'm not doing what I thought I would be doing, which was going huge and landing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And he kind of saved me. He was like, you know, Robin, you're not here. Like you haven't been selected to do this production because you ride like Travis or ride like Austin or ride like Brian. You're here because you ride like Robin. And I'm like, Whoa, like mine just (laughs) blew into a thousand pieces. And it was that little bit of perspective change where he was like, you know, just do the stuff that you want to do. Like pick lines that are like, you know, that Robin would pick and that Robin knows that she can land and like, do what feels good. You know? And I was kind of like, Oh, like literally just full mind blow. Like, Whoa. And from that point on, I just approached it differently. And I was like, you know what? And 
Travis was so good with me. He would like take me out and be like, Hey Robin, what do you want to ride? Like what looks good to you? Like you choose what we are all going to ride this morning. Wow. And having that support to be like, you know, cause I think he saw it. He saw me like really trying to like, you know, do something that wasn't really in my wheelhouse. Like, you know, I'm not going to ride like Travis. I'm not going to ride like Austin because I'm neither of those people. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. You know? And so it took that like perspective change to kind of approach it differently. And once I did that, I started um, to actually see some, you know, good shots and like, you know, it looked, it looked way better on camera because I was riding more confidently and more like, you know, within my ability and what I thought was a small line turned up, turned out to be something really epic, right. you know, and yeah. you're like, okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, that whole experience was definitely a game changer for me on, in snowboarding and, uh, you know, just kind of leaving that expectation, pressure and, um, behind yeah. and kind of just trying to do what feels good. And, realizing that if you kind of stick to that the outcome is always going to be good yeah i've i've always uh shied away from interviewing women on the show just like kind of nervous around women kind of afraid <laughs> to, <laughs> to talk to to women uh, not That's not funny. like i've uh, i've got a wife <laughs> i'm cool but um so there's that part of it and then also i was off in my perspective and i just heard you mirror what i used to think right like on some level, I thought women just aspired to be as good as the guys. Like, that was the goal. Like, parody. Mm -hmm. I even talked about it with Jess on her first episode. Like, when do you think parody will happen? When do you think the girls are going to be better than the guys in half pipe or whatever? And it's not about that at all. It's nope. like every little girl and every woman that watched Depth Perception was inspired to snowboard like you. Jess taught me that this year, early on in the season, when I was talking about like, well, come on, you know, women's stuff, it's not as good as the guy's stuff. And she's like, to who? To you. But think yeah. about the women that are watching. She's like, I used to go through the magazines and just like flip to the ads because that was the only place where I could see women snowboarding. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, like the same thing as you, a little perspective change. And I haven't gone back. I've been able to eliminate watching women's and men's snowboarding as the exact same event. It's not. Yeah. It's been progressing steadily right alongside the guys and in exact proportion to the amount of support that there is out there. So more support, more women like you out there, more inspiration. Yep more support, more progression. Like that's what we're all about. I think that makes yeah. a lot of sense. And I think it's, you know, we don't want to write off the guys completely. Like, right. We take inspiration from. Yes. But really like same thing as just said, when I was growing up in snowboarding in my twenties, my heroes weren't the dudes. Rad. <laughs> it was the girls. I was like, yes. those are my heroes. Those are the people I can see myself in. Mm -hmm. These women are who I want to be. You know, yes. I wasn't, you know, <laughs> you kind of have to step back and take a look. And even now, like, I know that, you know, people will look at, you know, our finals runs and, and it's fine with me and say like, wow, look at Mickel's run. And then, oh, look at Robin's run. Like, they're so different. Wow. Sure. And I'm like, yeah, they are. You're mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. But it's not a contest between women and men. No. It's, you know, we're all trying to snowboard the best we possibly can. And there's always going to be haters. Yeah. And the bottom line is, is that was the best that I could do on that day. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, I was right. like, well, that's just how it turned out. And even now, like, I compare myself. I'm, I'm like, oh, like, that's what I did this morning. Like, just, you know, obviously there's been a lot of, like, um, action on Instagram and yes, I was watching Mickel's final run and I was like, wow, like <sighs> I want to snowboard like that, <laughs> you know, you know, and I'm watching my run. I was like, Hmm, I have some work to do, <laughs> but it's just, 
you know, and that's just part of it. We, we compare ourselves to women and to men and it can be a very judgy and, um, harsh world out there and learning to navigate it in a way that you can continue and not like hate yourself is yes. part of it. Well, you know? that's and, like huge. taking the wins, yes. taking the wins and being like, yeah, I did that. You won. Like, nothing, yeah. <laughs> nothing takes away from that. Right. You know, like, and right. that's been a bit of a, a journey for me to be like, uh, you know, like know where my flaws existed um, whether it was within the system itself or within the writing, it's just like, you know, all things aside, you still have to have some sort of celebration. You still have to like be able to congratulate yourself and Big be like, time. Hey, like you still did this, even <laughs> if it's not exactly what you wanted, it's still there. And I, I think that's the great part about having a trophy, like a physical trophy. <laughs> Cause then you're like, you know, when you get down on yourself, you're like, oh, should have grabbed there, should have like spun there, right. should have done this, should have done that. And then you look at it, you're like, still got that. Still won. Yeah. Couldn't still have okay. won it anymore. It's still okay. You couldn't yeah, have got okay. a place higher than first place. Yeah. Yeah. I and love, nothing's perfect. I love you know? what you're saying because it really ties this season together. We're coming to the end of season six of the show. And I started out with Kearns and I was reading this book called... Uh, self-hate and self-appreciation oh, now mm -hmm. I'm, I'm botching it but i've read <laughs> it i've read it and gone back and read the end again and it's mm -hmm. like this is the society we live in is that we've mm -hmm. got you know the unprecedented world champion of free ride women's snowboarding here on the show and you're talking about <laughs> going through your run with a fine tooth comb or just looking at Mikel's run and being like, ah, fuck. But that's yeah. what we all do. We do that no matter what we do. I do that. That was how I started the the uh, this year. I was like, the fucking bomb hole is the best. They've got the best guests. The best. They've it's got cool. the fucking funniest people. They've, they're great interviewers. Why should I even bother doing this? Why bother doing this? And then my listeners reached out and were like, dude, seriously, because uh, we listen to your show we love your show stop yeah. stop comparing yourself to something else like we want your it's, show it's different so it's different it's a different deal and you know like it didn't take me more than you know a few minutes of saying it out loud and then getting the uncomfortable you know everybody saying like hey or not everybody but like people reaching out going like dude keep doing the show i'd be devastated if you if you stopped yeah. you know that no, I was like, like there doesn't ugh. have to be there doesn't just have to be one show. Right. And that's exactly. the same thing in snowboarding. Yes. It's like there doesn't have to be one one best person. Right. We are we can share the space. There's yeah. a, more than enough room for ten best female snowboarders. Yes. There's there's the best freestyler. There's the best like you know, competition rider. There's the best line rider. There's the best like jump rider. Yeah. Like yeah. we don't have to, we don't have to say like, Oh, this person's the best. Right. Like it's, we can share it all. Like there can be multiples and yeah. it's the same with your show. Yeah. I mean, the bomb hole's great. Yeah. I love what they're doing. Me too. It's a different show. Totally. Totally. And there's room for more than one. Thank God there's more than one. <laughs> yeah. There's like, yeah, there's exactly. a bunch now. Yes. And that's how like your podcast will probably get that much better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, is by focusing yeah. on my podcast. It's the same thing that you were saying. And also the self-love comes a around way. Um, it just builds a better vibe. You know what I mean? Like yeah. self-hate. There's there's lots of great that comes out of that, too, because you want to improve. But like at some point you need to give yourself a friggin break. And be like, yeah. oh, my God, everybody does this. Everyone. That's the lesson of the show is that it doesn't matter whether you're the best at snowboarding, the worst at snowboarding or anything. The people at the top are doing the exact same thing as the people at the bottom. They're yep. like, oh, shit, I'm not as good as that. Or, or com you can always find something to compare yourself to in this mm -hmm. day and age, especially You've got the tool to do that in your pocket 24 hours a day. You're just like, if you want to feel shitty, just Google 
the thing that you want to do. And there's a hundred people doing it 10 times better than you. And you're like, well, why should I even bother? Well, you know why you should bother is you should stop Googling it and stop looking, unless you're looking for inspiration, like, yeah. And start fucking just doing it, like doing it and enjoy it. Like hopefully what you've chosen, you enjoy. And that's what's, that's what's clear for you is that like, oh yeah, you're having fun out there. You're, you're having fun. You can see it in your riding. It's it. You're you're an inspiring rider. Like I like Thanks. watching you ride. It's awesome <laughs> because Amazing. yeah, because you're putting your personality out there in the in the snow, and you're clearly good at what you do. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's it's hard to. Um... It's hard to accept that, you know, it, <laughs> you just hate everything you do. Yes. That's just, yep. you do. That's just what, that's why we're here. If we, if we were confident and we we're like, oh yeah, I'm super sick and that's it. I'm doing the best shit ever. You just, it's, it's hard to progress, <laughs> yeah. you know, but when you like pick out all the imperfections and you're like, oh God, I have to do better. I have to do this. It's a, that's what keeps us going. You know, yeah. any high level athlete can attest to that, that nothing is ever good enough. Right. Right. And when we hate everything we do, and it's just important to find ways to come back down and be like, okay, like <laughs> I may have hated that run, but I still got this cool thing in the end. And <laughs> there's a little bit of self-love in that. You're like, oh, okay, there it is. Okay. Yeah. And it's probably the same, you know, you were talking about Jess. It's probably the same for her where, you know, she probably doesn't like the way she looked in that or like hates her snowboarding, even though everybody else is like, oh my God, yeah. you're so badass. Yeah. And, you know, winning awards and stuff like that. Like, you know, how many times did she win writer of the year? It's like, at least she can go to that and be like, yeah, but I still won that. Yeah. I yeah. was the best writer that year, even if I hated what I did. Yes. Everybody else loved it, which is cool. And I think that speaks also to just what the human experience is. Sometimes you're down yeah. on yourself. That happens. And yeah. it, it's nice to have those reminders of things. You know, I look around, I see I've got this awesome life with like snowboarding and my kids and my wife and all. You're like, holy shit, how could I ever be yeah. down at all? Like, this is, I, I'm so lucky. This is so fun. Yeah. But then uh, it's weird yeah. to me when people like abandon snowboarding. I'm oh, like, whoa, what? Yeah. Like they just leave it completely. And Go I'm like, on. wait, what, what do you mean? Like, how, how can you do that? Yeah. <laughs> I just look at the lifestyle that, you know, snowboarding has given me and the friends I've made, the experiences I've had, I could never let it go. Like I am so grateful for like, what my life turned out like i'm like whoa <laughs> crazy like look at all these amazing people look at all the amazing things we've been able to do like what all because of snowboarding um i'll just i'm a lifer <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i'll always snowboard i'll always be involved and it's funny because i talked to my dad you know he phoned me on friday and congratulated me and he was like, oh, it's so awesome. Do you think you'll hang up your snowboards? <laughs> and I laughed out loud, you know, because it would be a really great, like, um, Bjorn Lines move. You know, how yeah. we, like, one rider of the year, video part of the year, and I'm out. <laughs> you know, it would be a really good time to do that, we, like, get out while you're ahead. But I don't want to. No, man. Just <laughs> I don't. don't. Want you. <laughs> yeah. I'm already looking at next year, like, all right, I need to go get back in the park. I need to. <laughs> I love that. You know, it's crazy. I just, I look forward to every season and I just love it so much. And I'm, I'm so like stoked at how many people, like, the culture has really solidified itself. Yep. And, you know, we're here to stay and I'm just, just so stoked to be a part of it. That's a total mic drop right there. Rob, nice. Robin, thank you so much for being on the show. I've been a fan for a long time. And, thank you. And I'm I'm really happy to be bringing more female voices out there to inspire female riders to listen to podcasts on snowboarding and to go out there and shred like you. 
Thanks so much. It was a really nice conversation. and uh... Yeah, likewise. It's, it's nice <laughs> to have an interview that's like real and not talking like the whole time about contest. And right. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much. Oh, I really enjoyed that. F and Rad shout outs this week to Robin Van Jin. Thank you for doing the show, Robin. That was fun. Thanks to listener Sam Crosby from Edmonds, Washington, who sent me a headband back at the beginning of the season that I've worn the most of all my headbands this year. Thanks, Sam. And thanks to all you guys and girls that listen to the show. You're a big part of why I do this. You can donate to the Effenrad Foundation by sending a PayPal or e-transfer to effenradfoundation at hotmail.com. Special thanks to Alex Kacharski for supporting the Effenrad Foundation on a regular basis. You're the best, dude. Be sure to come back next week for the final episode of Season 6 of the Effenrad Snowboard Podcast presented by Vans and brought to you by SIA Productions.